Well, if it's not going to be Siakam, why not look at Jeremy Grant from the Blazers or Boyan Bogdanovich from the Pistons or both of them? You mentioned in your article uh, about what Sacramento could do and about how Siakam would be a really good fit for him, but it has been reported that Siakam doesn't see himself as a long-term fit there. And you kind of made the case that, like, that would actually be a really good case. And I thought it was interesting for you to bring up the Aaron Gordon thing because I think that is super applicable here. I, I, am, I don't think Pascal Siakam can be the second best player on a, a team that can be there at the end. I think he needs to be your third best guy on a team that can be there at the end. And people can nitpick on the the Raptors thing or whatever, but like, yes, there are certain nights, but like I'm talking about, I agree with you in the sense that like, you got the two guys. You've got, you've got, you've got Fox and you've got Sabonis. And those are the guys that I'm going to be counting on night in, night out. And then this thing, this thing, one night he's going to win me games by being, uh, being able to dominate his matchup. Right. There were, and, and then there's other times where it's not going to be as applicable, which is exactly what we saw with Gordon. We saw Gordon dominate in the playoffs and then for a moment looked unplayable against the Lakers and then ends up helping them win the NBA finals. And it, but you knew that that thing's running with Murray and, 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 and Jokic. And then there's going to be nights where Gordon's, a guy, a big time contributor for him. And then there's going to be other nights where he might not. And I do think that Siakam's destiny is to be that third guy on a team that is a devastating in that role. Um, I think he'd be a good fit, but obviously, like you were saying, who who knows? Maybe he just doesn't. Yeah. I, 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 who knows what he thinks? kind of money he's getting in this offseason. He and, might just not like the city. He might just not want to maybe be in Sacramento. It might be that. It might be that he has a friend on another team that he'd prefer to play with that friend. It could be something along those lines. I, I don't well, know. He also exactly may not feel what, that they're going to unload, you know, back up the brinks like he expects it to be backed up. For sure. That, and that that's part of the challenge that the Raptors are facing right now, too, because you, you get a lot of teams that don't want Zach Levine that don't want to pay Pascal Siakam the money he he could demand this offseason. So there's not a lot of teams out there uh, that makes sense for Siakam when you check all the boxes with with team fit, team situation, the 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 finances to acquire him, the willingness to pay him. There's not many out there. So I think Sacramento, that's the tough spot Like in terms of do you want to give up what it takes to get Siakam when he hasn't committed to stay with you? after the season and do you actually want to pay him or would you rather go in a different direction which is why I outlined a plan B within that article I said well if it's not going to be Siakam why not look at Jeremy Grant from the Blazers or Boyan Bogdanovich from the Pistons or both of them because they do have the pieces to go out and get both they could in theory trade Harrison Barnes with Davion Mitchell and picks to go, to go get Jeremy Grant. They could trade Kevin Herter with picks to go get Boyan Bogdanovich. And that would effectively give them those types of Gordon-esque third pieces that you're talking about where Grant is a good, highly qualified number three for your team. Bogdanovich is a better Kevin Herter. He's a more versatile scorer, a bigger defender. Jeremy Grant, everything you said about Pascal Siakam with the ability to elevate his play and, and, and be a guy who plays a role on certain nights is applicable to Grant as well. And Grant is a better defender. Um, like he's not as big as Siakam, but Siakam looks like at least this season has completely folded. He's just not putting in the same effort we've seen from him in the past. Grant, Grant isn't obviously either for Portland, to be fair. They're not a great team. But Grant, I think, is the higher upside defender, the more versatile defender who would fit next to Sabonis in that front court. So I think either either or both of those guys would be welcome addition for the Kings. Much like the Knicks uh, acquired Ananobi, you know this, Kev. When we get to the playoffs, bro, you got to have wing defenders. Like this is what, and and oh, yeah. min, 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 and I know you, 
you you kind of nitpicked on Jade McDaniels, but we know this. We know they've got they've got wing defenders. They've got guys that they can put on guys on the wings. They also have wing offensive players. Uh, a lot Oklahoma City, o- Oklahoma City switchable guys that can defend wings. Uh, Denver, you're gonna be having to deal with these, right? You know you're facing these pick and rolls, and you know they're gonna try to attack any situation that you're weak at. So you want to have these wing defenders, the Clippers, they just got, I mean, a full bag of them that they can throw at you. And you got to have guys that can defend those guys. If you want to get that. And so I, I actually think that you're probably better off. I like your, much like I endorse the grant acquisition or that's who somebody Daryl should be looking at in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, the Kings as well. They need, they need better wings. They need better yeah. wings. I mean, they got to the point where they had to bench harder and they're putting in, uh, you know, they, they, they were starting, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? The guy that uh, I, I saw him start. In Duarte. The first game. Duarte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that used to be on the Pacers. Um, I mean, it's not good enough. And no, Monk Small when he comes in. But, I mean, they, they need some. They're they, all they too need, small. The, the, yeah. All of them. Her, Her, Herder's too lean. Duarte's too short. Harrison Barnes doesn't rebound, doesn't have the size, toughness. Murray's strength. okay, but he's not a mega athlete. No, you know I, mean, I mean? Murray, Murray's been good defensively, and he's better than he was last year defensively. He's a better overall player than he was last year. But he, he Keegan Murray should not be your number one perimeter defensive player guy he should be your second guy or your third and guy. Mi- and mitchell's tiny yeah the mitchell doesn't Damn, even yeah, play yeah yeah all right so so i don't know i i, I just think with them keegan's good it's just he should not be your stopper he should mm-hmm. be your number two option to be a stopper and that's where i think jeremy grant or pascal siakam particularly grant as that stopper um would be i mean the truth is is the grant's Bogdanovich idea within the article we framed it as like plan B. The truth is that might be a better plan than just getting Siakam. Having those two salaries and Grant and Bogdanovich rather than the one and Siakam that needs to be paid could be more beneficial in the years to come as well because it maintains your trade flexibility to have those two salaries for further potential upgrades or changes in the future. Um, so I don't know. I think Grant should be the guy alongside Bogdanovich for a, you know, a, a top option for the Kings. And we'll see. We'll see what they end up doing because we know they're out there. We know they had conversations for OG, even though they ended up not making a serious offer. We know they've had conversations for Pascal Siakam. Uh, it's just a matter of who they pull the trigger on. Uh, I look forward to seeing what the Kings do, and I hope they make a move because I want to see them increase their chances to make a run. <laughs> 